In today's video, I'm sharing what are chakras, their location and function, relationship between chakras and aura. Next, I'll discuss each chakra in detail. And finally, share tips on how to use this information to empower yourself. I've added timestamps in the description below, so feel free to skip forward. So let's start with what are chakras. Now, if you search for seven chakras online, the most common image you will come across will look something like this or this, representing chakra one through seven. Now, another name for chakra is energy center. Whenever two lines of energy cross, they create an energy center. Now, typically, there are thousands of energy centers in the body. But what makes these seven energy centers or these seven chakras special is that these are the areas in which the energy is highly concentrated. And it's also the location where major endocrine glands dump their hormones. So as an example, chakra one is related to kidneys and adrenal, and the main endocrine gland associated with this chakra is the adrenal gland. Chakra two is in the sex centers, and the glands there are testes and ovaries. Chakra three is in the stomach area, and here the pancreas dump their hormones. Chakra 4 is in the heart area and the gland connected to chakra 4 is a thymus gland. Chakra 5 is in the throat area and the glands connected here is the thyroid gland. Chakra 6 is in between the eyebrows and the gland linked to this chakra is the pituitary gland. And finally, chakra 7 is on the top of the head and it's associated with pineal gland. Now we have all heard about chakras, but what is it that makes them special? What is it that they do? Now chakras perform a number of functions in the human body. First and foremost, they vitalize the physical body, organs and glands. Remember this image we saw just a moment ago? Now wherever you see a chakra, all the organs and glands close to that chakra will be vitalized by it. And the way chakras vitalize the body is by transmitting and absorbing energy. So think of chakra like a Wi-Fi router. Just like your home Wi-Fi router will enable you to communicate on internet, similarly, chakras make it possible for us to interact with the people and energy around us. Because these chakras are constantly receiving and transmitting energy and information. Now, each chakra has its own frequency spectrum. Now, if you search online for chakra frequencies, you will generally see an image that looks something like this. Now, here you can see that the first chakra transmits and receives red color wave frequencies. And this is why the first chakra is usually represented by red color. Similarly, the second chakra transmits and receives orange color wave frequencies. And the third chakra transmits and receives yellow color wave frequencies, and so on. Now, chakras increase circulation of energy or life force in the body. And when these seven chakras are balanced, cleansed, as in they are working at an optimal level, you don't get disease or pain, and you feel an overall sense of harmony in your body. Now, chakras also bring about spiritual growth and consciousness development, as in when you are growing spiritually, at some point, you will consciously start working with each chakra. So each chakra performs a specific function and just based on the location alone, you can intuit its function. So like at the most basic level, your root chakra, which is chakra one, is connected to your physical needs and everything you need to feel safe and secure in your life. Your second chakra processes your emotions and we can also call this the emotional processing center. The third chakra is the center for will and determination. The fourth chakra enables you to feel and express love. Fifth chakra, again based on the location, is how you express yourself through voice in the world. The sixth chakra, this is connected with inner vision and intuition. And the seventh chakra, when this gets turned on, you start having awareness of other realms or even other planets. And this chakra is related to ascension. Now for most people, their first three chakras are working, 
while the rest of chakras are usually dormant. Now the word chakra in Sanskrit means wheel or something that is turning. So often you will see chakra described as a vortex or whirlpool of energy. Now chakras are not part of your physical body. As in if you were to dissect a human body, you won't find chakras there. And that's because chakras are part of what we call an energy body or a subtle body. And they are located along a central column. Now, when we think of chakras, a lot of time it's easy to think of them as stand alone. But in reality, these chakras are closely connected with the aura. So if you search online for human aura, you'll usually find an image that looks something like this. This is basically human body with different layers of the aura. If I were to separate out all these layers, it will look something like this. As you can see, there are seven layers here. Now each chakra is connected to a layer. So layer one is connected to chakra one. Another way to say this is that layer one houses chakra one. Layer two houses chakra two. And all the way to layer seven, which houses chakra seven. Now, even though you see these layers as separate here, these layers penetrate and surround each other. And what differentiates one layer from another is the frequency at which it vibrates. As you move from layer 1 to layer 7, the frequency increases. Now, with this as a baseline, let's go through each layer and chakra in detail. And I'll spend the most time on chakra 1, 2 and 3 because that's what majority of us are working on. And as you go through chakra 1 through 7, what you will find is that each chakra, each layer has a specific theme, a specific intelligence and a personality, if you will. So let's start with the first layer of the aura, which houses the first chakra. Now the first layer is called the etheric body. Etheric comes from the word ether, which is described as the state between energy and matter. Etheric layer is an exact replica of your physical body, but at an etheric level. So when disease forms in the body, first it will start with imbalance in the etheric layer before it manifests in your physical body. Now this first layer, it also includes the involuntary functions of your body through the central nervous system that includes breathing, digestion, excretion and the likes. Now the first layer and also the chakra is represented by color red because it transmits and receives red color spectrum of frequency. The first chakra is also called the root chakra because it's connected with everything to do with your physical body and it's located at the base of spine. Now the level of intelligence connected with this first layer is a subconscious mind and the main function of your subconscious mind is data storage. So you can think of subconscious mind like a hard drive for all your memories. Right from the day you were born to the current moment, every single experience, the good and painful, is stored here. And especially when you have traumatic experience, even if you don't consciously remember them, those experiences are stored here and they keep impacting your daily life until you learn to communicate with your subconscious mind and clear out those memories. Now your subconscious mind doesn't judge the data, as in it's not a reasoning mind. It can say, oh, this is good, or this is bad, or it won't tell you, oh, the fears you have are actually coming from when you were three year old. It can't do any of that. And so whatever you feed into this mind, it is. And hence, the onus of programming this mind lies on your shoulder. As in, think of programming your subconscious mind just like you would program your computer. What I mean by programming your subconscious mind is that you assign new meaning to your fears or to your traumatic experiences so that they stop impacting your daily life. Now, the subconscious mind is also the mind that people tap into when they are working with the law of attraction. Because your subconscious mind, it doesn't know the difference between what's reality and what's imagination. So whatever images 
you keep thinking in your head and you keep repeating over and over again, that is what your subconscious mind will manifest in your life. Now, this is also the level of mind that you tap into during hypnosis or when you go deep into meditation. Since the first chakra and first layer has everything to do with your physical needs, a way to check if this chakra is open and balanced is to ask, do I feel safe and secure in the world? And if not, what stops me from feeling safe? Usually it's going to be the unconscious memories of shock, trauma, fear stored in the subconscious mind that prevent you from feeling safe. And so, to open and balance this chakra, number one, you want to commit to healing these painful memories. And number two, really commit to overcoming your fears. Now the second layer of the aura houses the second chakra and the second layer is also called the emotional body because this is the layer that processes all your emotions. Now the second layer and also the chakra is represented by color orange because it transmits and receives orange color spectrum of frequency. The second chakra is also called the sacral chakra because it lies close to the sacrum bone. It's located about two inches below the navel. Now the location of this chakra tells us that if there are any imbalances in this chakra, they will manifest as problems with kidneys, bladder, or reproductive organs. Now, the second layer is also called the seed of creativity. And creativity is not just about birthing children, but also expressing creativity through art or having genius ideas. The second layer and second chakra also influences your relationships as in how you interact with others, not only in terms of a partner or a lover or sexual relation, but it's connected to all of your relationship, be it a relationship with your mother, father, brother, sister, friend, family, social work, you name it, every single relationship is recorded in this energy center. Now, since this layer is your emotional body, in this layer, you get to decide what kind of emotions you want in your life. So think of emotions like different colors in your palette. And like an artist, you get to choose which colors, which emotions you're going to paint your life with. Now in the second layer, the negative emotions are birthed from unhealed trauma. So remember when we were discussing layer one, we discussed that the unhealed trauma is stored in the hard drive of your subconscious mind. So when this trauma is not cleared, it creates energy blocks in the second layer, which manifest as feelings of unworthiness, shame and guilt, feelings of lack of trust or self-doubt, betrayal, abandonment, anger, rage, fear, entrapment or enslavement. Now the second layer is also called the seat of addiction. And that's because when you have negative emotions like we just discussed, and you don't actively work towards healing them, then outwardly, these negative emotions manifest as addiction. And this could be addiction for anything. It could be for food, for money, for sex, for power, for control. I mean, the list is endless. Now, oftentimes, you know, this is one of the hardest layers to master because healing this layer means you have to clear out all the negative emotions and patterns. And this is why this layer is also called the pain body. Because in order to heal these emotions, you have to get to their root cause of why they are there, acknowledge them, and then you get to heal them. Now, the level of intelligence connected with the second layer is called the instinctual mind or the desire mind. And the function of the instinctual mind is that it conveys data from your feelings and feeling experience into the hard drive of your subconscious mind. This layer also houses your instinctual impulses, which are usually hidden from your conscious awareness. So say you lost your job, immediately your brain goes into survival mode. You feel anxious, you feel worried. That's your instinctual response. Similarly, someone cuts you in traffic. The instinctive response for most of us is either anger or rage. The point being here is that how you instinctively react to a situation 
and especially when you have a knee-jerk reaction to something. That's again coming from unhealed negative emotions in this layer. Now going back to the example of law of attraction, in the first layer, in the etheric body, you decide what you want to attract in your life. And in the second layer, the emotional body, here you become mindful of which emotions you will allow to attract your desires. Since the second chakra and layer has everything to do with your feelings and emotions, a simple way to balance and open this chakra is through number one, committing to healing your relationships, and number two, really committing to clearing your negative emotions. The third layer of the aura houses the third chakra. The third layer is also called the mental body because this is related to mental focus, linear thinking, and also your ability to manifest in the world. Now the third layer and also the third chakra is represented by color yellow because it transmits and receives yellow color spectrum of frequency. Now the third chakra is also called solar plexus chakra and that's because this chakra sits next to a set of nerves in the stomach area and it's located in the upper abdomen and it energizes the digestive organs. Now this layer contains your thoughts, beliefs and ideas. And because we can see our thoughts, what we don't realize is that thoughts can take a life of their own. Like thoughts have a distinct shape, size and form. They can also have different degrees of brightness. And when we have persistent negative thoughts, they can turn into possessions. So you really want to be mindful of what thoughts you are having. Now this is the layer where you use the power of your thoughts to change your life. So this layers hold your personal power, your will and determination to manifest your dreams. And this is also the layer that houses your discipline, self-esteem and concentration and of course decision-making skills. So the level of intelligence which is connected to the third layer is called the conscious mind or the reasoning mind. Sometimes it's also called the ego mind. Its main function is to reason and also it acts like a filter in how you perceive the world at an ego level. Like most of us don't realize that we are constantly bombarded with tons of information. How do we know where we need to focus on and which ones we can skip? That's a function of your conscious mind. Now in the earlier segment, we talked about how unhealed trauma is stored in the subconscious mind. Now that trauma creates negative emotions in the second layer, which is your emotional body. But in this layer of your mental body, the unhealed trauma creates negative thinking, where now everything that you're thinking is colored through the lens of your ego. It's colored through the lens of thoughts of lust, anger, greed, envy, jealousy, gluttony, laziness, discouragement, and even pride. So how do we synthesize the energies of the third chakra and the third layer? Now, since this chakra and layer has everything to do with your thinking, so a nice way to balance and open this chakra is to understand, just like Edgar Cayce said, thoughts are things. Every single thing starts with a thought. And so you want to have mental discipline and really discern and take time what thoughts you are going to entertain and which ones you are going to reject. Now, so far, we have discussed the first three layers of the aura. The triad of layer one, two, and three, this forms your personality, as in who you are at a personality level, your likes, your dislikes, and everything that makes you, you. And when you are operating from this first three layers, you don't feel your intuition. Like, you know, a lot of people say, no matter how hard I try, I can't feel my intuition. That's because they are operating in these first three layers. In order to connect with the intuition, you have to move beyond the first three layers. Now the triad of layer four, five and six, together they form your soul. This is where intuition, higher awareness, higher sensory perception starts coming online. Fourth layer and onward are also called spiritual layers because they are directly connected to your spiritual growth and evolution.
So the fourth layer of the aura houses the fourth chakra and the fourth layer is also called the astral body. Now this layer and this chakra is represented by green color because it transmits and receives green color spectrum of frequency. Now the fourth chakra is called the heart chakra because it's located in the chest area and it is this chakra that enables us to form loving bonds with others. Now this layer is where feelings of joy and love exist and this layer it also acts like a bridge between your personality and the higher layers of the aura because once you start developing fourth layer this is when the spiritual energies start getting activated in your body and now you are starting to move beyond your personality. Now when you start hitting this layer you are not so much focused on yourself and you start becoming aware of others and of humanity in general. So the level of intelligence connected with the fourth layer is the astral mind and it's connected with the astral plane. So the main function of the astral mind is that it helps connect with the superconscious mind where you bring realizations, insights from higher planes into this plane. Like you may be sitting in meditation and suddenly you get insights on how to address, say, your business problems or what steps you need to take to move forward. This is telling of a higher mind. Now, another attribute of this layer is that when people form relationships, they grow cords out of the fourth chakra and these cords connect these people. And the longer and deeper the relationships, the more cords people are going to have coming out of the fourth layer. And so a lot of times, you know, when relationships end and people are feeling raw and exposed, what's also happening is that at an energetic level, in the fourth layer, these cords have now gotten torn and are causing pain and suffering. And so to heal from a relationship, these cords have to be routed back into yourself. Now with all this information, how do we synthesize the energies of fourth layer? Now, since the fourth chakra and layer has everything to do with expressing and receiving love, that's only possible when you clear the emotional pain. So really committing to clearing emotional pain. And when you do that, what you're essentially doing is that you're taking the negative emotions in the second layer and you're transmuting them through love and forgiveness, which are the hallmarks of this layer and chakra. Now, a lot of times you will also find the fourth layer being called the higher emotional body, and it is for this reason. Moving on to the fifth layer, the fifth layer of the aura houses the fifth chakra. And this layer is also called the archetypal body. Archetypal meaning archetype or prototype of something. Now, the fifth layer and also the chakra is represented by blue color because it transmits and receives blue color spectrum of frequency. Now the fifth chakra is also called the throat chakra and it's connected to speech. It's about spiritual will through communication. Now when you start working with this layer and if at all you hold back your communication, this will create energy blocks and health problems in the area of throat, mouth and sinuses. Now the fifth layer is when you consciously start aligning to divine will. It's like consciously knowing, okay, I now understand what I'm supposed to do with my life, with my gift and with my time. So the fifth layer, it holds the blueprint of the first layer, which is the etheric body. So the way this works is that here is your physical body. Next, we have the etheric body and then the archetypal body. And the etheric layer in turn is what builds the physical body. And so when you really look at it from a blueprint level, the fifth layer holds the main blueprint and hence called the archetypal body. Now, when you start developing this fifth layer, every single thing in your life starts to change. Your job, your relationships, where you live, every single thing. And at this point, you really start expressing and speaking your truth and you start to come in alignment with your physical purpose. Now this layer is connected to speech and communication and sound and a lot of times it's also called 
the sound body. Now the level of intelligence connected with the fifth layer is called the archetypal mind and the main function is that it acts like a higher mental body. So remember when we talked about the 3D layer, we called that as our mental body. So 5D is the higher mental body and typical attributes being higher mental processing. Now with this as a baseline, how do we synthesize the energies of fifth layer? Now, since this chakra and layer has everything to do with your communication and your power to speak things into reality, so a way to balance and open this chakra is number one, say what you mean and mean what you say. Meaning when you are choosing words to communicate with another person, they should really represent who you are and then make sure that you commit to doing things that you said you were going to do. That you are not intentionally gaslighting or misleading people. And at this level and at this layer, you really start to become true to yourself and you communicate with others from that vantage point. So moving along to the sixth layer of the aura that houses sixth chakra. Now the sixth layer is also called the angelic body. And this layer and chakra are represented by color indigo because it transmits and receives indigo color spectrum of frequency. Now the sixth layer is also called the third eye because it's located right between your eyebrows. Now the typical attributes of this layer is that it's connected with a higher quality of love where you feel love for all life and it's much beyond what we as human think of love. Another attribute of this chakra and layer is higher senses, inner vision, sight, clarity, and it's also connected with intuition. Now, when you start working with this layer, you start synthesizing your karma. Meaning, instead of having positive or negative thoughts, you start becoming neutral in your thinking. And the polarities of good, bad, higher, lower, positive, negative, they start neutralizing. And that is what allows your soul to express itself in your physical body. Now the level of intelligence connected with the sixth layer is called the angelic mind. And here you start to feel love as a force. Now so far we have discussed layer one through layer six, where we said layer one, two and three, that forms your personality. And layer four, five and six, that forms your soul. Another way of saying this is that when you develop layer 4, 5 and 6, now you are fully connected with your soul. As in your soul is fully anchored in your body. And everything that you do is under that soul's directive. Another way to say this is that now you are a soul infused personality. Your soul awareness is quite strong at this level and you start to merge and experience a state of being an individual but also as a collective. And finally, the seventh layer of the aura houses the seventh chakra and this layer is called the Katheric body. Now the seventh layer and chakra is represented by color pale violet because it transmits and receives pale violet color spectrum of frequencies. And the seventh chakra is called the crown chakra because it's located at top of the head. Now, when you start working with this layer, you start connecting with the mind of planet Earth because this layer represents planetary function. And when you get to this level, the emphasis is now on the collective consciousness. You're no longer thinking about you alone, but about humanity and the collective impact and race. Now, this layer represents liberation from karma and you no longer have to incarnate on this planet. That is, you are free of karma, free of incarnation, and you are free to fly away. And the crown chakra is related to planetary ascension, meaning now you have ascended this plane. Now the level of intelligence connected with the seventh layer is called the Katheric mind. And again, the standard attributes are higher mind, freedom from spiritual blindness, you become integrated as a spiritual being, and seventh layer and beyond, you start hitting into oversoul or the monad level of spiritual expansion. 
Now, there are additional layers in the aura beyond the seven layers that we just discussed. And if you want to explore higher chakras, then I've added a few links in the description below. So feel free to check those out. But if you're just starting out in meditation, then learning first about the seven main chakras is an excellent start. And now on to the final part of the video. How do you use this information about chakras to empower yourself? Now, I know I've shared a lot of information in this video and it may feel overwhelming at first. And so my number one suggestion is start with basics. And that includes really start becoming aware of your thoughts. That's step number one. Because if you have too many negative thoughts, then the first step is really commit to clearing them. Next, pay attention to your emotions and emotional triggers and conflicts. What are the circumstances that throw you off balance? Start making a list of them. That alone will start giving you clarity on emotions that you need to pay attention to. Next, pay attention to your relationships, especially the ones that you need to heal or improve. And everything that we discussed for Chakra 2 is a good place to start. Another way to empower yourself with this information is to ask yourself, are you operating as a soul, which is layer 4, 5 and 6, or as a personality, which is layer 1, 2 and 3? And then most importantly, which level you wish to operate from? You know, opening and balancing your chakras, it takes time and patience and commitment. But if you put in the work, the reward is again, you know, complete freedom. Now, in the description below, I've added few links to articles from where I sourced this content. So if you would like to explore, I highly suggest checking them out. Also, you can download all the slides I shared in this video in the description below. I hope the information in this video is supportive in your journey. As always, please only take what resonates, discard the rest, and thank you so much for your time. I'll see you in the next video.